Both teams feeling frisky. Four man stack towards the B bomb site for NIP early. Not any kind of a fast paced play from Astralis, so Hampus is going to start rotating off. Rez has got to be careful he doesn't get stuck here. And he's put himself in a position where he's able to fall back. Nice feel, nice timing as well. They just come up the stairs as he sinks back into the A bomb site. No information yet for NIP other than quiet at the B bomb site. As Tag has just cleared off sandbags towards the short water. Oh, and Rez is going to get the first point of contact here. Config on the other side, jumping and shooting around that flower pad, but he gets absolutely knocked out. Rez with a great USP headshot, but behind him, the bomb side is falling, and that's a problem. Bomb is going to be planted. Four versus three now. S Tag coming up that connector to try and see if he can wrap around, and he will. Taking down Blame F. What a nice shot. Yeah, really good shot. Even spots out Glaive's position. There's the peak. Can't find that kill. Rez coming back towards long. The retake is going to be slow. It's starting to get in a position where they can actually pull the trigger, but there's a kid on Plopsky. He's alone, and he's forced back. He's got two Astralis defenders to deal with. Yeah, so they really badly need that defuse kit to make it up there. And let's just we say it. Plopsky goes down, so the kit is lost for the minute. S-Tag trying to go for the full 10-second defuse, but that's going to be rudely interrupted. Farnik will take him down. And Astralis, they win the pistol. Yeah, Plopsky being isolated really kind of reduced the options that NIP had in the retake. A bit rough. Nicely done from Astralis. Even losing config out towards long, still able to progress through dice boxes and through the truck into a plant at the A site. one nothing for the Danish side. Yeah, they're going to be... going to be loving that start. Even if they lost the early kill out there to Rez, they kind of knew where he was. He couldn't really get back into the action the same way that he wanted, so... Astralis are all right with it. Going to be a triple boost down here, but that is already spotted out. Blame is just waiting for the kill to be his. He's spinning around, and now they know where everyone is. That's a full five-man read. It takes three to boost, and they saw the other two at the L-Ben, so... Anyone can do the man. Oh, Not anyone. I have so many names I want to pull out in this moment. <laughs> do it. I do, but... Name them. <laughs> no, I... It's too early, Jason. It's Come on, just one. You have so many names. Give us just the one person you know that can't count. <laughs> well, that's... Uh, <laughs> listen, according to recent interviews, that's you, Jason. Uh. <laughs> Uh, I was going to say DDK, you know, but yeah, yeah. only because I love Dan so much. <laughs> Go to waste, you know? What if we just brought in, like, a dedicated uh, shit talker for each team? Like, Taz is on one team. Here's another good one that we could bring in. We've had some uh, we've had some pretty good Danish ones. Danish all for free, please. Okay. It's pretty good at that. Put him on the other side? Yeah. Got some... There's, there's people out there, I'm sure. A new roster position. Teams are now seven players. One of them just smacks, just talk smack the entire time. Yeah. Just to, just to get the energy up and running. I like that. Brolin's aggressive towards Fountain. The only player here. S-Tag back towards Khan. Our divider. First kill for Brolin. That's bomb hitting the deck. And he can stick her. Ooh, ooh, the Molotov is burning. He didn't take any damage from bullets. I thought that was going to make him so much more comfortable. But now it's awkward. Now he's got to hope and pray and an aid puts him down. That's... what a Molotov. That, I mean, you could see that they were lining it up, but the fact that it it kind of covers both sides of that box is crazy. It spread way farther than I think Brolin expected. And obviously way further than he desired. 48 seconds on the clock. Plop, Plopski, excuse me, has a smoke. Reds has a flashbang. Those are the only nades for the entirety of the NIP team. Yeah, that's a bit of an issue. 40 seconds now, and they're starting to make their way down... Through the connector, going to be hitting this B bomb side, which is about to have three people on it. Hampus, he's got the right read. He knows what's coming, and they're going to be getting that early defense. So now their nades, they matter a lot less. Oh, Farlick taking a lot of damage. There's a good find from Config. Rez going to turn the corner. They don't have resources to stop this, or do they? Blame F just holding for it. Two on two, Molotov, but Hampus is already out of the position. Once again, coming up sandbags. S-Tag stops the plant, and that should be the round. 1v2 for Blame F. Oh, that is so scary. S Tang with the perfect timing there, but that initial peak, I think it was Plopsky. I think he went for it, expecting for them to already be planning the bomb in that moment, but there was about 15 seconds left, so they weren't quite doing that yet. They almost lose the round of that. That's horrifying. Just the constant repeaks from NIP, like even though they end up losing a decent amount of players with it, I think two players taking those fights, the, the timing of them just never makes Astralis feel comfortable getting that bomb planted. 
First round for NIP on the board. Astralis fully invest everything they've got. Three AK or two AKs of Galil. Deagle and Mac 10 for the Astralis loadout. Okay, feeling like they they could put a lot of pressure on. They're not wrong about that either. 1400 bucks on Umbrella, and that's about it on that NIP side. So if they win this one, it's going to be huge conflict. He's got the right read, he's got the right position, and Umbrella not even close to ready for it. He probably should have been dead. That could have been the end of his life, and maybe a great start for Astralis, but they managed to sneak away just. Hampers still hanging around the connector, so he's got a very central position to do some, some real damage here. He's hearing this. Worried he's going to get flashed. You can see him turning around for it, but he's actually got some really good timing for it. We'll see if he can actually connect it. Ooh, comes back just as they both peak, so I take it all back. Timing not at all working out for Hampus. Not even a little bit. Stag's going to back up deep into the bomb site. No one from Astralis outside of B. So NIP has three defenders there for the moment as Brolin's kind of flirting between the two bomb sites, but doesn't really know where the attack is going to come. 34 seconds on the clock. Zipix going to give up control of staircase and over towards A we go where S tag is playing retake. There's not enough utility to pull off a retake. There's only the one kit on res. And if NIP doesn't shift someone over to actually try and defend this bomb site, I think they've just got to give it up once Astralis pull the trigger. Yeah, I've, it's either that or S-Tag is going to get a triple kill right now because I, anything short of that is probably never going to be possible. Great little run. Not even that much utility behind it. And NIP already making the call. It's not worth it. So 3-1 to one in favor of the Astralis side. And this this attempt to, to buy into the round working out really well. Keeping the pressure on and forcing NIP into a very uncomfortable position. We got some time to kill, so I want to ask you a question. Oh dear. Uh, Astralis was eliminated from the first European RMR just this yeah. past week. True. That make, does that make you nervous? That's my question. Yeah, yeah, it does. Okay. It actually does. Because <laughs> um, I, I just think all the RMRs are, are just difficult to make their way through, even at the best of times right now. It's it's yeah. it's, it's hell on earth to be, to be trying to qualify that way, so... I don't know, not if you're, did you see the tweet from Halzerk? <laughs> After he qualified with complexity, he's like, man, I don't miss the European RMRs. He gets to play, he's over in NA playing on easy mode. <laughs> well, that's, the, maybe that's the way to <laughs> yeah. go. He's having a good time. The, the, the Europeans have found a, a loophole. I'm like, sweet. We get over here, the food's better. World domination. The food is better over there. It's true. And vouch for it. Here we go, fifth round. And NIP, making the call early and being able to save all the, the rifles is great. But now they have to put those rifles to great use in this round. Or it won't really make that much of a difference. Yeah, and on overpass, when you go down, you know, 4-1 running out of money or 5-1 on the scoreboard, that starts to make you feel real nervous. It's not a deficit you want to be at early on. Rolling and stairs. Good flashbang. Can't connect the shots onto Farlig. Nate comes in deep. He goes for one more fight. He's being boxed in and he knows it. Zipix coming from behind. Oh, he somehow finds a one for one. Good stuff from Brolin. The bare minimum. Yeah, but also looking just a bit shaky. You know, that first opening kill with the flash setup, that would have been perfect. He probably could have had that one right away. Not quite able to connect it. And obviously, the, the dream of picking up an AWP on the CT side is going to be a little bit away still. Rez, nice opening or follow-up, I guess, on the SIP, taking him down and connector and trying to get back out, get away, back to help out the beef bomb site, which he's going to be able to do. Long-range fight. Hampers taking down Config. I haven't had to say Config's name that much yet. Just a single kill so far in the first five rounds. And now it's a two on four. So this is looking amazing right now for the NIP defense. Running out of time as well on top of everything else. Blame is going to take quite a bit of a tough battle there, but he's able to take down Plopsky still with only 10 seconds left. There should be absolutely no way those bullets are flying right over his head. Rez, ice cold on the other side, not giving away the game. Good play. He's going to cut off Blame F and he wins that fight as well. Heads up from Rez. Farley giving away the game with that spam coming through, but cutting off Blame F right at the end of the round is beautiful. All the weapons taken away from Astralis and NIP 
in a decent position. Well, they at least they at least avert disaster. Yeah, I mean, I think this this really they needed this one to slow down the Astralis sign just a bit. Still and this is a round where they probably feel like they should build up some bank, although it's pretty dangerous one from Astralis. I would look for a set piece with all these Tech Nines, all this utility. They might spread out a little bit initially, but you got to feel like, you know, the, I think the bread and butter under the Astralis name would be a very powerful B execute here with these Tech Nines. They have at least one great round that I remember with Tech Nines, Jason, on training. <laughs> shut up. <laughs> you shut your mouth. It's been a minute. Been a minute since we've seen Train as well. Uh, maybe that's something that could uh, make its way back at I one point. I miss Train. I love Train. I really like Train too, but I, w I wonder if it's just old nostalgia now. It's been so long, but uh, but I do. It used to be one of my probably only outdone by Nuke in the past for me. But um, yeah, I agree. I mean, surely it is going to be some. Yeah, they're, they're doing all the research right now, figuring out is anyone from NIP far up on the A side of the map. If not, we're going to go back and then we're going to throw the flashbangs and run for it. Yeah, they're making sure that the defense is not being aggressive. They want to make sure that there's no information for NIP, like someone pushed up towards long that would allow them to stack four players at this B bomb site. So they're going to fall right into it. And now NIP is trying to deny space with Rez close up at this monster angle. Let's see how it works out. Smoke clears, double kill for Rez. That's huge. That should actually just straight up put a stop to this round. Astralis don't even get to pull the trigger on the tactic they called, already backing away. But you're going to have to eventually go forward. 30 seconds left on the clock. If there was a re rewind and, and sort of, you know, repeat button here for, uh, for the round, It'd be interesting to see what happens if they do kill Rest in that in that tunnel, or even just trade him one for one. Because I'm assuming at that point they just they pull the trigger and just try to go all in. Ten seconds on the clock, and not even a bomb pun in this one. Going to be a little bit of damage onto a couple of players on the NIP side, but that is about it. So, super well done from NIP's point of view. This is exactly what they wanted. Yeah, all five players survive, get to build up a little bit of money. You know another strong buy for Astralis is coming in here. Astralis probably had the money to force buy if they really wanted to, but... Just take a little bit of a breather, let the money build up on their own side as well. So some economic decisions for both teams, powerful economies for both teams. Only Blame F going to be relegated back to the MAC-10. Three to three. Who picked it? Maniac pick Astralis, I believe, and maybe one other person. I feel like there was a lot of, a lot of enthusiasm for an IP if you can pick him so far. Oh. Roland. That one doesn't spread. And now he's got a little bit of backup. Going to be blowing up the door. That should take a fair bit of attention away from Sip and the rest in there. Yeah, they're worried about it. Flash to set it up, but he's going to swing against nobody. They were already behind cover. Blowing up that door is just so strong right now. It's such a difficult thing to deal with for the T sides because it just allows... Uh, there's so many different ways to be dangerous. Some of them just spam. Some of them the boost over, as we saw. There's a couple different boosts you can get to peer into that deep angle. Good kill from Rez as he goes hunting. And gonna back off as well. And again, because of that door being blown open, remember there were two players in that hallway in that underpass for Astralis, and they, they give it up. They back all the way off. It's just Zipix there, and he's not being aggressive whatsoever. And losing that outside of B presence when Blameth goes down is just super devastating. I think he had the MAC-10 as well, so hard fight for him to win, even if it's up close like that. Another good flashbang. The first one in the connector tunnel didn't really do anything, but this one, it absolutely obliterates Farlig, and he's... It's not no more. 25 or 30, 35 seconds left. And it's a three versus five. NIP. If they win this battle, it's not even gonna be a round here. Glaive will finally take a little bit back, but they know what's coming. They still have another two people at this bomb site, even after losing one out long like that. And I don't think Astralis are ready for that. Normally we've seen this a lot already in this first half here. It's just a single A defender with, you know, a, a, a second guy who was kind of floating between the bomb sites. This yeah. time they had three people already. Well, I mean, it, it, that, that's all born from the fact that two players in Rez gets that kill, clearing out the short water, finding that MAC-10 early on right here. After this, NIP is like, okay, well, we, we know the kind of the players over towards the door got forced back once we blew it open. We know the water is clear now. So, yeah, everyone pay attention over towards the A bomb site. There's layers to that as well. The setup with Brolin underneath the sign. Hampus is able to chuck out a pop flash, which nuts him a kill, but even if it doesn't get the kill, it's information gained, right? So they have some different options for that A defense to make sure it's as solid as possible. Good nade early on. Glaive and Farleg brought down to near-death territory. Yeah, no Kevlar mess, so... I guess the shrapnel just... I don't know. The clothes doesn't stop it that much? Nah, probably not. Wool versus... I don't know. Kevlar? Yeah. 
probably better. <laughs> yeah, if you try and go the Iron Man route to get the shrapnel, stop it from, you know. Okay, well, yeah, magnets. Yeah, exactly. I don't know if Glaive or Farley could be could be like a superhero, but Blamef could. You know, he could he's got the he's got the build for it, you know. He does, but I mean, you know, Captain America was a little bit more scrawny when he started. You know, you don't give oh, the superpowers yeah. to the That's guy who's true. already strong, you gotta give it to the guy who's experienced weakness. That's fair. I could do I could I can I can get behind that. Roland out here. Ooh, an H E kill as well. They don't lose a single player again. Just what a turnaround. Uh, surely, if we looked at a graph with just the money so far in this first half for NIP, it, it would have been a bit of a downswing, and now it's just it's rocketing back up again. And I think that's a small detail that probably doesn't get talked about in terms of the impact of these things as an American. Depends as you, on, it depends on who you ask. For me, it's <laughs> unintelligible nonsense, but I, it, should, it's, it is obviously, it is fairly related, so I'm just probably lazy. Yeah, probably me. There's some yeah. evidence to that. Well, I mean, if you tell me Swedish is unintelligible nonsense, that to me sounds like they should be pretty close because Danish is the most ridiculous language to listen to. It's true. We've got the whole minus minus thing yeah. going on. I like it. Round nine. Five, three lead for NIP. Defense holding real strong. This is four in a row. Put it like this, Jason. I used to be on NIP and I never even considered learning Swedish. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Ooh. here we go. Plopski, even flashed. Gonna be able to take down Blamef. He committed that fight, though, and the flashbang did seem like it was it was good. It seemed like it could have been enough to kill Plopski. And that was designed to activate Blamef as well. That was entirely how Glaive was setting him up from sandbags. Chucking flashbangs over to clear an angle to blind a defender at certain specific positions so that Blamef can have some freedom for the fight, and Plopski just finds it completely blind anyways. Five on four. No flashbangs left for Astralis. Two smokes, two Molotovs. And almost no map presence at the moment here. They're really, they're sort of being shrunk down into this position outside of the B-bomb site, which again, if you get the op opening kill, you can crack Rez down here at the tunnel. It's gonna be different, but he's not taking the bait even. He just wants to wait for it. 20 seconds left in a four on five, and it looks like they're just gonna back on out. They just don't even feel it. And, you know, by the way, I think in round five, we mentioned Config being at one kill, but now we're about to enter round number 10, and it's still just the one kill. Yeah. And I mean, that, that's, gotta be, that's, that's gotta be a huge concern, and that's been a huge concern for this Astralis team. It's been one of the major talking points is, what's happening that we can't find a way to get Config comfortable? You know, for a long time now, it's felt like he's only really that confident in, in, in his game on Ancient, right? Like, it just seems like he's been a little bit lost. I feel like Config... I, you remember the, you remember Mel Gibson's character from Lethal Weapon? Where sure. they have to make him really angry and he dislocates his soul, soul, shoulder to get out of the straight jacket. And yeah, he, yeah. He, and he murders everybody. I feel like that's how Config is similarly built. Like, what if they take a car battery and jolt him with the start of the game? Sure. And he's just <laughs> fired up. Yeah. Does that make sense? Is that a reference to too old to be one? Uh, I mean, it's definitely a reference that's going to be too old for the large majority of the, conver uh, of the community. I appreciate it. As People a should watch As a Lethal Weapon fan. Go back and watch Lethal Weapon if you haven't. It's yeah. Still worth it. Still good. Ooh, boost on the other side. Hampus, maybe a second later spot it. They're going to be almost getting the kill on top, but the whole thing crumbles on the other side. Here's what's curious about the save in the previous round is... I'm not sure what it's like really gotten Astralis that they didn't have in the previous one, right? Like, I mean, maybe you have a better feeling of coming back in the next round, but you still don't have any flashbangs. I think there was only enough money on two players to buy an extra grenade. So you're still not, you know, you're not, it's not like you're able to just kind of refresh your utility and go back into it. And once again, you're at the same position. Clock is running down. You're not in really, you haven't gained any real map control because you don't have the utility. This time, instead of two smokes, two Molotovs, you've got three smokes and one Molotov but you've still just got to kind of pull the trigger on and execute much the same way you would have had to do in the previous round. Yeah, and that's it is certainly a bit of a downside to one of the, some of the tricks that are being pulled here from the Astralis side when they don't get the openings. That is 30 seconds, and they're set up for a full-on A execute. We're going to see...
the limited utility they have it has to be really perfect but already three people on the other side of the smokes here so nip they're set up well falling though that is a huge double entry taking down s tag and rolling it it's all on hampers he's alone and he's going to be answering back swinging up with the m4 he's out of bullets finally and 10 seconds on the clock they're going to actually relocate that bomb plant just to make sure that it's not interrupted from the connector and somehow astronomers get the bomb plant and make it through that three-man defense that's wild and crazy yeah just a double kill from farlig nothing special even to set it up they didn't have anything to set it up flopsy is going to be everything on this flank if they want to make this retake happen i think zipix spotted out res there's the molotov flopsy getting close now as well yes he is but glaive is out there oh in the middle of nowhere he's gonna get caught sip still with a lot of health left and fighting flopsy nice crouch actually down from behind that trash bin and able to pick him off blame f with the final kill onto Rez and Astralis, that is going to be surely a sigh of relief for them. This round looked not very good from the outset, but um, they picked it up. No, it didn't look like that should have even been possible, but deliverance from, from Farleg to find these two kills. There's the first one. Aztag not even realizing they're progressing all the way up, and Brolin swings right into it afterwards. So a little bit of a gift given over to Astralis. They'll take it at this point. Fourth round on the board. Ooh. All right, Farlig pointing out that they haven't really picked up an AWP, but he happens to be saying that into a round where they are picking up an AWP. Yeah, I think Aztag just kind of was was feeling comfortable on the on the M4s, and they were on a little bit of a winning streak. Remember, there was so many rounds too where Astralis didn't even find a kill, so no real uh, motivation to kind of swap into the more expensive weapon. But as you mentioned, now he's got it at the divider up highway. The timing just going to give up the angle. So S tag with the op and Brolin going to hold down the fort at the A bomb site. It's Hampus to play rotation and Rez once again going to get frisky. Yeah, I actually love this. Oh, look at the timing. Did Sip spot him? Yeah, now he definitely did. Rez still almost getting the kill on him. This is so crazy. The fact that he tried to go for it. Look at the confidence on this guy. I actually can't believe it. He doesn't only just get the kill on, I guess, the third player that he was fighting in there. But he managed to almost take down Sip on top and now hampers with the wall band to drop him. That is... That's a very rare fight. Not just to try and take, but to actually win. That's got to be so unexplainable if you're if you're Zipix. Like, you're going to watch this back and just not even realize how how you didn't get that kill or Astralis in general watching it back is not going to realize how they even allowed this to happen. Got to say, great support as well from Plopsky. When Rez is fighting that retreating battle, he peeks off the other angle, is able to grab one more in the door to help secure Rez's survival. And Astralis, once again, just going to have to save. Two on five, nothing really to fight for here. Back into the doldrums for Astralis. You feel like as soon as he gets spotted trying to hunt Blameth in the, in the sewer tunnel, it, it's game over for that play, and he probably should be dead. But he managed to turn it into so much more. That is unusual. But NIP will take it. 7-4, to four, three round lead. And they got so much money as well. This is like Astralis now playing T-side overpass on, on like a, just a really hard difficulty. They've got to win multiple, two, three, maybe even four rounds in a row to take all this money away from NIP. Whoa! <laughs> I actually, Hampton's is great. <laughs> oh man. That was like a baby bird screaming for food. <laughs> it was. Oh. Six to one run for the ninjas. It was You see a ridiculous clip where they where they like they take the sound a goat makes and put it into like a bunch of clips of opera. <laughs> it's, a, it's a really old internet video like that. But that could have I've been seen the, the goat clips, I've never seen it mixed with with Oprah. It's beautiful. You you'd enjoy it. Somebody's brain is operating in a weird way. No, oh, Rez is getting so aggressive. Ooh, close up. He's got the first. Klopsky has the second, but Brolin even combines in. And once again, Astralis, they're the ones pulling the trigger on this attack, but like they don't even get any clean fights. They don't even get fights through that smoke. NIP cold cocks them right there. This defense is actually just starting to look so good. They have think of how many different points on the map right now they feel confident in is that if, once you control the monster tunnel itself that's obviously a giant you know piece of the defense that you have to put together and that's been pretty great all throughout whether it's been you know this time like a little bit of a combination but otherwise rez has been playing down in this tunnel on his own and doing a really fine job 
And then up at the A-bomb side, they've had some time off, just take a little bit of a mental break. And Cologne was kind of a disappointment for them, but I mean, coming back here outside of the break, you know, this performance right now is just kind of a reminder that NIP still a very dangerous, still a very strong team. And I mean, even the games they lost in Cologne where they were all games they could have won, it felt like. They, they all looked like games that could have been going their way. So I'm sure it wasn't a, a fun a fun tournament to get knocked out of, but at the same at the same time, looking back at it, maybe with a couple of weeks going past, they should still, I think, be pretty excited about what they were showing in the in that tournament. 13th round, and we've got Astralis back on questionable weaponry. Deagle back 10, and a Gilil. That's a nice way to put it. Uninspiring, in Uninspiring. many ways. One smoke, that's nice. Yeah, always good for for something. Well, at least they're going at S tag with the op. So if you want, if you're gonna have this like lower weaponry, obviously it'd be great if you could get the op shot to miss, close the gap on him a little bit. The significant time in the reload between shots. Brolin has the first S tag misses his initial one. Now he's got to back away. There's only remember the one smoke, so they can't block off every choke point. Hampus involved in the action. If he can stop the bomb, that'd be great. But these weaker weapons are doing a lot of work. What a read there from S tag. Re ready for Blame F to jump on top of the box. That's something to work with. But where are they taking that bomb? They're just leaving Glaive here and trying Rez to bring it back this. down. But yeah, Rez knows. He definitely hears everything. Pops, he's going to go check and not really even really realizing someone is still there. So that could get really awkward. But only if the bomb goes down. Wait, they're bringing it back? Oh, no. This is some actual matchmaking that we're just saying. Glaive is going to be taking down S-Tag. And NIP have got to be confused. Just a sound fake. Rez calls everyone over. That's perfect. Aztag even going searching for the player that I believe they did spot. This is not a round NIP should be losing. What a way to find an avenue into the bomb site. Here comes the retake, but look at the positioning. It's just so strong from Astralis. Yeah, it is. And there's no smoke in play right now for the NIP side. So they're going to have to go and try and sit on top of that bomb while it's just in plain view of everyone down there by the restrooms. Plopsky, though, that's a huge one, but a headshot from Glaive. And that probably is the round one. No time here for Plopsky. He tries to fake it out, but Glaive will drop him. And even if he hadn't, it would have been the round for Astralis. Nice triple for Glaive and a great round here for Astralis. Absolutely shocking that they win this one. Unreal. The little double fake with, what, 20 seconds left on the clock when they start coming back. Unbelievable. Good job from Glaive. He finds all three of these final kills. Last two with the op, and obviously we saw that nice Deagle headshot as well. Eight to five. Astralis fighting back, but this is where things get a little bit dicey. This is where we just mentioned the NIP economy means they're buying for the rest of this half. There's no easy rounds for Astralis any longer. Let's see if some of this is going to be enough to bring Config into the game a little bit, because that is something they've been really lacking. Not doing a lot for the opening half so far. Last two rounds here, if he can get couple of kills in each maybe that'll be the the thing to set him on the right path here top fragging on the ct side is rez at 12 kills and nobody's actually even close to him on anywhere on the server that's great at one point in time rez and brolan definitely would have i mean that's what you wanted to see out of the younger generation of swedish counter-strike and i guess it's not too late they still have a lot of years ahead of them the way that they're playing I, I mean, I, I'd put Hampus up there as well now, since he's kind of shown to be a little bit of a revelation since he joined NIP. I don't know what everyone else kind of expected. I didn't expect him to be as good as I think he is now. But, I mean, even even Hampus, when Brolin joins, is saying, if you want to be the best Swedish team out there, you have to have the best Swedish player. That was the entire point of going for Brolin. Well, it's been working out. Still some stuff to fix. Oh. All right, finally gets another chance at it with the AWP, but it is a one versus five that he's fighting for here. Bomb farm would have been nice going into the 15th round, but they're not going to be able to get it. So, and another point out. A lot of positives to look for. Maybe they could finish this 10-5 if they can win this next round. Nice. Such an intimidating sound. Does that go out through speakers in the studio? No, surely not. Maybe. I hope so. I, I Now that you say it, I, I really want that. I want that to happen. <laughs> oh, Rez going to get aggressive. He's found success pretty much every time he's done this. How aggressive does he want to get, though? Oh, 
close, but there's some attention being stolen away from Broland. You could see they're setting up that same Molotov to the tree box there, but not going to be able to find anyone this time. So, Rez, this fight against the MAC-10, he should definitely be winning that one, although right behind him, still getting the kill. Glaive is there for the revenge. That is a little bit unfortunate timing. If Glaive was a second earlier, maybe he could have saved his teammate there. Oh, panic on the side of Popsky. Yeah, he was uh, He looked, uh, He looked. was ready for that fight. He paused and settled his, settled his feet and got ready for it, but caught off guard, I guess, by the angle Glaive was playing from. Hampus is going to have to step up next behind the smoke of Monster. Spamming in, making sure no one's setting it up outside. Return fire does a lot of damage, and the op finishes him off, and almost the follow-up from Farlig. That would have been great. Brolin and S-Tag to defend. Yeah, they're in a great position, but there is about 40 seconds left, so I guess they don't have to run for it, Astralis. He actually took 99 damage in return, Hampus, trying to do that. That's so crazy. <laughs> Brolin now looking under the smoke, in fact, walking through it. And on the other side, Glaive patiently waiting 30 seconds, and... All of that patience is paying off right now. S-Tag is on his own, one versus two. And they're going to go for it right here, see if they can set something up. But that AWP is a huge equalizer in this kind of a round. They're going to put up more smokes, and he's just walking up, still scoped up. He didn't actually spot anyone there, but they might not realize how close he is. He missed the flick, and Glaive will take him down. To say AIP's defense did look pretty good, but I think Astronomy's got enough rounds on the board that they they still have something to fight for here. Nine to six split. It's not, not the end of the world. No, not. I mean, when you consider some of the rounds Astralis won, I mean, the nice little 2v2 at the end, but think of the round they won where they did the double fake from the A-bomb site back downstairs and came back. That was huge. That gives them some breathing room into the second half. Farley gets traded off one for one. I don't know why that looked so funny. It looked like Brolin just sat and didn't even shoot the gun. It's like, he was like... <laughs> I'll give you two him. shots before I respond. Yeah, yeah. you get the first swing. Oh, you, I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bit rough, but um, traded right back. Rez, on the other hand, was lightning fast on that P250. All right, smoke flash left on S tag for this NIP attack. They've got to deal with a pretty aggressive defense. Glaive in the stairs looking for information, sees nothing, but Blame F and Zipix are going to be hard to get by at Monster. Still a lot of time, but just a spot here to alert Astralis what's happening. Look at the way that's pulled everyone. Glaive just gets out of the staircase. He's back towards Sandbags. Config now playing retake at the A-bomb, so he's going to have a very fast rotation. Yeah, that's a good point. They're about to be four people on this B-bomb site within a five-second window, so might be difficult, although that will clear things up. What an opening. They don't check the corner. Sip. He's wedged up in here, just gliding down behind them. Silent, and with that USP, able to take down the bomb. That's 25 seconds left. The duelings just showed up on the l -band. Oh, this is a nightmare. They thought they were home safe, but Sip is up behind them, and he'll win the round. Astralis, that is huge. Nobody checked it. Not one of the four players. First player did. It was a real, <laughs> real like, that's like a 50% clear. That's like a little jerk of the mouse just to make sure you look in that direction, but nothing all that special. And Zipix is able to manage it. He was very, very patient with that. You don't want to mess it up. Good shot from Rez, but it matters for nothing. He almost even, he almost came down a little bit early from that. Almost Fire! ran into S-Tang there. Ooh, all right. That's one of those tricks that almost always gets checked. I feel like it almost never works, but this time it's great. Seven to nine. I think a much needed pistol round being picked up by Astralis. Yeah, this is gonna be a really close affair down the stretch. NIP is gonna have to win a lot of gun rounds to make this look good. Blame F. Another kill for him. Two in the round so far. Farley gets activated for some bonus money, and Blame F eventually does fall. Two remaining for NIP. Yeah, it'd be nice if the MP9 can pick up a you know, couple of kills, maybe especially for Farley with that AWP later on. So, yeah, he's out hunting for it, and he'll get three of them in the round. So, he's going to take it, and he'll pick up the M4A1. So, just nothing but winning at the end here for him. This is, this is now both pistol rounds won by Astralis in both second rounds as well. So they've got like a nice little kind of 4 nothing lead based off the pistol round and the ensuing follow-up round in both of these halves. Yeah, that's a nice way to think of it. 8 to 9. I mean, once again, absolutely anybody's game. Apart from Config, everyone's playing really well, but he still only has 3 kills here. So we're still kind of... We're waiting, waiting for him to get activated in this game at some point. Yeah, that's where it gets interesting. That's where it's like, man, if he ever, if he ever does kind of switch into this game, 
Well, let's see if Astralis can just blow it up on the scoreboard and just rattle off a win. Nice opening kill from Farlig. He can look for that kind of a jump because he's got Blame F tucked into the corner to make sure nobody can close the gap on him. And S Tag might almost be wondering that, saying, wait a minute, if he's if he's scoped up holding that angle, he almost has to have some back about here. So didn't want to go and, and look for that fight either. Three versus four. And a tough start here to the second half for NIP. Yeah, it really is. Config's looking for it with just a Famas in hand. Ehe on the other side, blame it for that long range. And S Tag, again, because of the early position for Fale, not completely uh, unreasonable that he would go and check that just to be sure. Three versus three now. And Config spotting out a T player just slipping away into the connector. Yeah, that was that was interesting though. Config was just kind of falling back, but I felt like he was going to commit to that fight. He was just peeking for information. So backing away, he saw Plopsky slip in towards the staircase, but NIP's going to come right back and attack. S-Tag very low. 2 HP on him. Smoke Flash Molotov for the T-side to use. At the moment, it's silence for Plopsky. Glaive wasn't ready as he turns the corner. Good opening kill. b bomb site is there for the taking. That's a pretty tough position to be caught in there when you're almost pre-aiming a different angle and they just slide out against you like that. Yep. Config. I don't think they can go for this. No, it doesn't not, feel like it. Not with Farleg's off. So weird. This three on three before the kill on Glaive looked absolutely winnable for Astralis. It looked like they had the better position, and all of a sudden, it swung back the other way. So I was kind of surprised that Config didn't actually commit to that fight towards the stairs when he was at Sandbags. He was just like peeking for information, which is which is not the Config that I that I think of in my head. I thought he was certainly going to just commit and go for that kind of a fight. Don't think that was necessarily a deciding factor in any way. He does get one at the end. It's nine to nine, all tied up, as Astralis puts priority on the AWP. Yeah, they will. Wow, that's um, that's real interesting. Ooh, Falik actually. That's to get all the guns away from the uh, from the NIP side. Risky though, dangerous. Put it in a position where it could get taken away. Still, out of victory. You're exactly right. All the weapons, all the money is lost. Pretty good round put together by Farlig, considering he started it out with this. Yeah, he looks to be happy about it. Still can't believe that Astronis actually lose the round. Maybe that's something to look for if they're going to be able. If they if they have a read like that. They feel like they could put some pressure on Config and force him to to move in a bad way across the map. Well, that's certainly worth doing. Ooh, good shot and not enough time for the follow-up player Rez to peek out. Blame F going to be aggressive again. He's just like, look, this position worked. I missed the fight. It's not going to happen again. Yeah, backing off all the way into the B bomb side as well. They really don't want to risk it now that they have the four on five advantage. Looks like an IP though on the other side. They want to be speedy with it. A minute and 20 seconds and they just run through the tunnel. Going to try and make their way around, but that's already being read. I think three people were pre-aiming that smoke. Rez is going to get one of them in return at the very least, but it's still a three on four. And this is looking tough here for this incoming attack to the B bomb site. They need that bomb plant to put some pressure on the CT side. And S Tag, though, the Galil will do all of the work. And I can't believe Astralis actually get picked off in this. No, I, I think Config's going to be so frustrated. He saw a blind player, but again, that's just a fight that you would expect Config to win. But S Tag just rips his head clean off. Bomb has been planted. And once again, the call might have to come in to save this pretty quick. There's no kits, and you're risking the AWP, and you're risking your entire economy if you're Astralis. I don't think there's a chance they go for it. I, everything in terms of the setup, if you just pause the game and took a screenshot, you'd see three yeah. versus four and everything seemed to be working out for them. I think maybe the only disadvantage that Astralis had is they backed off that bomb site, all three players at the worst possible time, just as NIP was stepping up to monster and they had some clean space to work with. Oh, <laughs> speaking of timings. Yeah, bless my heart. <laughs> wow. Finally gets 17 and 11. That's, he's way ahead of everybody else in the team, which is great, but they're lacking some crucial components on the Danish side right now, and it's hurting them a lot. This is a nice kill, but this double up from S-Tag is everything. Look at this fight. This is It feels like Config just kind of get frozen out in the open, expecting that he was going to win the fight against a blind opponent who might not expect his position, but S-Tag had all the intel he needed. Perfectly done. Three-round lead and no money on Astralis. It's just the AWP. Yeah, NIP in a position suddenly where they could almost sprint to the finish line here if they if they keep going this way. Because Astralis will have not that many buys left in them if they if it keeps going this way. AWP on file again. 
otherwise just some supporting pistols. What a weird second half this has been. The call for an IP to push at a minute and 20 seconds in the previous round absolutely worked the way that you the way that you want which is not always you know it's not always a given it might not have even been designed to be honest with you it might have just been they had to speed things up because they got picked off you know at the door with yeah. uh, with the awp probably again is going to find another opening this time at least he's traded right off so just pistols remaining for astralis they can't recover the awp plenty of utility for nip to create some space and opportunity and hampus is going to start taking advantage behind the flames and they might know that there's a bunch of people at the bomb site, but just given the weapon difference here, they probably don't care that much. They feel confident in this fight so far, just fighting the pistols outside of the AWP, which as you pointed out, it's already lost behind them. Conflict goes down last, and it will be a 12th round for the Swedish side. Well done. I'm starting to feel it. Yeah, really. And this is playing out just like the first half. Uh, you know, Astralis wins the pistol, wins the second ensuing round, and then once the guns come out, NIP just starts taking over, and it has a very similar vibe to it at the moment. 12 to 8. Three rounds in a row for NIP. Still waiting on that. Config X Factor to be, to be showing itself. Yeah, it doesn't feel like it's coming, does it? If it is, it's going to be even more exciting now because it'll, that's surely the only thing that will save them at the moment. It feels like this gap is building and they, they really need him. Yeah, the only thing really working for this Astralis defense at the moment is Farleg with this AWP. He's been quite a nuisance, especially in the early stages of the rounds. I think two or three rounds he's been able to find the opening kill for his team, but they haven't really been able to convert all those into a victory. Nade to blow open the door and give Farleg this angle this good amount of damage. Rez jumps across, baits out the shot. They now know the position of the AWP. And they want to put some speed behind it. <laughs> what a catch from f -tag. You mentioned this earlier about him getting a little bit more aggressive and a little bit more confident with the AWP. Well, here it is. That third kill. Absolutely blowing up Glaive. And Config and Blame of two versus five. Not even a chance to get near the bomb site. What a wild opening. That's some disgusting shooting from s -tag. That is the kind of thing that'll start to convince people and convert people into believers if you can pull that out. I think that time it's just NIP Pulling, they spot out the AWP, right? And once the op is spotted, you know typically in today's Counter-Strike, he takes his shot, he shows his presence, and then the defense shifts. The op gets into a new position, lay down some utility to buy some time to rotate some players around. NIP finds that timing right when the op is conversing about switching and changing the defense, and they just hit an opening that, that Strauss didn't even realize they were offering. Yeah, Who was I, the first kill from Aztag? It was Glaive, I believe, or Zip pushing Zip, down towards yeah. Monster. Like, he didn't expect any kind of a peak coming from Monster at that point. His attention was kind of halfway towards Sandbags, maybe making sure he's not getting picked off from an off angle. He never expected the op to be that aggressive. Timeout called from a strong Central, yeah, like right by the hotel. Yeah. Hopping yeah. in with all the Danes. Do, do, Dan do Danish people, like, work? I just look out my window, and there's, like, people drinking beers, jumping into the water all day long. Yeah, that's a kind of work, I guess. <laughs> Maybe they get paper. Maybe they're you know, they're all influencers, Jason. In <laughs> An economy of influencers. <laughs> Jesus. I'm, just, I'm sure there's no way it could backfire. It's no. The, this is the bubble that won't burst. Config. Been talking a lot about him, but not uh, not in the light that we normally will. Just more of a kind of a where where has he gone? Where is he? And is it possible to get him back before NIP sweep up this game? They're about three rounds away from that happening, so we need him to do something. And he's he's gotten very aggressive in this one. Oh, he wasn't even flashed, but just the timing of it. Rez walks around the corner. Conflict sure there's going to be a push coming through the tunnel. And it never comes. Sip trying to see if he can follow it up. That is a good headshot. He could do more here. He'll take down Hampus, and that's a huge win with just a pistol. They nearly get that one, too. But Plopsky able to return it two, oh, sorry, three versus three now. And a chance maybe for Astralis. What a shock it would be if they won this round. Oh, I think this position from Plopsky, I think this is such a smart piece of aggression from Plopsky just to push all the way forward. You allow for a safe plan on the other side of the pillar. And I don't think there's any way Astralis can really make this happen. Blame F starting to come through Monster. You might as well give it a shot at this point. Yeah, they're running out of rounds to play with. 
But also, no diffuse kit currently picked up on anyone, and no smoke either. HE, if it finds Brolin, maybe, and that's gonna be a start, but they are very low on time already. Two versus two here, and the bomb is planted in a great position for the position that they're having on the seaside here. Sip is checking everything out and realizing, yeah, there's no way. We just don't have the equipment to try and do this with. They're gonna tap the bomb, but they've already made the call to run, hoping to maybe catch a couple of NIP players running back into the bomb site. But that is about it. 14 on the side of NIP. Yeah, NIP just two rounds away from taking their first victory here at Blast Premier. Nice solid win. Yeah, it truly is. Oh, look at that jump. Config just not even able to react. I know I know we've we've mentioned it a couple times. I feel bad going back to it, but he's having a real, real rough time of it. Yeah, it is. I mean, we, we almost have to mention it because we know the, the high skill ceiling that he has. So I guess it's in contrast to that that we're bringing it up a lot. Roland already taking a bit of damage. NIP, if they win this one, they're almost home safe. They won five in a row. And look at it continue. Roland flash right through. That is a nice setup for it. And that's a cool change of the attack as well because you can even see Blame F off that flashbang. He's like, yep, they're going to be wrapping around. He's going to be coming and swinging, you know, to my right towards party, but Brolin's coming right around the edge of the smoke. There might have even been a design gap. Nowhere for Farlig to go, but they line up for him anyways. s tag with the trade, but Farlig's delivered again. I was going to say, that's such a... That's a terrible position to be in with an AWP, unless you're able to pull off something like that. But once he finds that first shot, it feels like he is uh, surely dead. Hampers in s tag, two versus three. Still 55 seconds, so not a lot has to go wrong in a round like this for Astralis to still lose the round. They're hoping for a mistake on the Astralis side, but at least they're not giving them that. And Glaive is so far outside of B, they feel pretty confident that no one's going to be sneaking through that side. It's, it's a nice position for Glaive, because even if they slip the net and go down the stairs into the B bomb site by sandbags, he's already in a great position to kind of flank and have a retake onto that B bomb site. So he's more than happy to just watch the single choke point. 24 seconds, and now NIP has to get aggressive. And Glaive is starting to move and realizing, all right, they're not going to be showing up, so he can even call that in. 15 seconds, config up close here with the M4. Molotov to set it up, and he'll get that kill on the Hampus, and that pretty much cancels it all out. S-Tag, no point in throwing away this AWP. They needed that opening inside of the A-bomb site, so it's going to be a ninth round for Astralis, which is something. Step in the right direction, but if not for Falig and that triple kill, they might still lose this round. Yeah, I, even if it was just a double kill, even if they don't line up and he just gets, you know, a second frag, I think this is still a very, very dangerous round, but man, Strahl is barely surviving. And of all people, it's Farlig to keep them in it constantly. He's been phenomenal on this CT side. The only thing to be happy about. It's true, much criticized, uh, yeah. you know, and maybe some of the time for good reason. Wonder what he's been spending his player break on. No. Oh, was that a Warming quad boost? Yes, it was. Lightning My quick man. as well. S -tag. Oh, it's a good response, though, from Farlig. Yeah, he's like, I know you're going to be stuck over on that side coming off the boost, so he's ready for it. Scoped up, and they throw the flashbang. It's a leg on Brolin. Oh, I would have loved to have seen him try to fight his way out of that one, but the leg shot makes it pretty much impossible. That's unfortunate. No reason for Rez to even flirt with danger in this part of the map. He knows there's at least one who's pushed down sandbags. Doesn't know about Blame F still at the base of the staircase. And someone on Astralis has got to take a risk. It is going to be Blame F pushing. This could be a massive flank. Keep your eye over on the minimap as well. Hampus pressuring towards long A. There's a smoke up at the moment, but he could actually challenge it. He could take that risk and walk right through. That would pull his team back into this flank. Oh, he's going to go check the other way. I don't even know. It's hard to even say who's coming out on top of this one, but... Oh, Blame F has picked the wrong direction yeah, as well. Yeah, it feels like it. It really does. Glaive and Config down here. They're about to get shot in the back. Config is dead already. Hampus able to find him, and I don't even know what to say. Absolutely knocked out. Blame F on his own. The flank, not even really much of a flank any longer. And I think they've already heard him. A nice tap there to take down Brolin, but it's too late. One versus three. And there's no reason that he should be winning this round. Do you go for it? Or do you pick up the op and pass it over to Farley? Yeah. What, what's the decision here? 
You surely will. As I think with the smoke down in Monster, you almost have to give it up. You do have the utility of a kit, but again, 1v3, they know exactly where you are, and time's going to start dwindling. It might just be time to grab the op and bail out. Almost feels like he's saying, I'll try and get the exits and then the AWP, but even that is, I would say, is somewhat risky. Yeah, I, maybe, yeah. There's just, I mean, we can see there's no value in it with the kind of money that NIP has uh, building up, and they're not even going to give them the opportunity. Wow. That is... Not what Astral is needed. 15 on the side of NIP. Things are still looking good. S Tang on 21 kills, so doing remarkable work at the moment for the NIP side. Well, op can be passed over. Here we go. Boom. That is a quick assembly of that. 17 on Rez, 17 on Brolin, and then with S-Tag actually top fragging at 21 on the NIP side, which is tied with Farlik. So, Danish Orpers at the moment are kind of battling it out. Got the grenades set up right here, and it could be effective against Glaive. Let's we'll see if they're going to be able to echo. They actually, they pull it back. There's Farlik again. Doing more work all the time. Lots of work. Flashbang over. Hampus going to be activated. Clears things out. He's got Config tucked into the corner at Sandbags, looking for a fight. Lots of grenades exchanged, but through the smoke, it's sit to find the kill on Hamper, so that's at least something. Three versus five here. It's starting to look pretty decent for Astralis in this particular round. Blame if it's pushed up really far out along by the flower bed, so he's going to have a a lot of warning in case anyone was going to shift over on that side. It's interesting seeing Zipix still kind of challenge and posture the way he is with low HP. You think at this point you just wouldn't want to give any kills back and not give any kind of opportunity over to NIP to get back into the round. Slowly and silently trying to assemble the boost with the flash on top. Wow, they're going to be catching Glaive. It's almost a free kill. Well done. Plopsky taking a fair bit of damage as he tries to make it through into the bomb site and Brolin down here playing around the smoke. He's calling it in, saying, I'm almost there. I could almost do it. And the flashbang might have set it up, but Config able to hold his own this time. And he's going to be getting a little bit of a double kill there towards the end of the round. Astralis, they live at least for another round here. Yeah, and th this is where this is kind of the last time where we say, hopefully that's a feel-good round for Config to snap him back into things. A little bit of a double kill and assist in there as well with some damage done. This is where you got to say, all right, you got Farlik finding you opening kills left and right. Now you need someone else to step up behind it, and hopefully it can be Config off the back of that nice double kill. I know it's not much to go on, but... Astralis are going to need it if they want to claw this one back. Fine. No arena. If not, we should be. Or if it's just in our ears. What sound, Jason? I'm, uh, there is no sound. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. S Tag is going to see the shot. Oh, he gets a leg. Blame F survives with 7 HP. That'll be frustrating. And Hampus falls next. Good damage on a Glaive and Blame F. Those fights are so close to going in the favor of the ninjas, but again, a three on five. Yeah, both probably feel like, man, that's, that's our fight to win right there. And it goes the way of Astralis instead. Rolling with the AWP. Out looking for it. Blame if it's on the other side. Could be a winnable fight here indeed. Taking him down. And Farlig is right there with the second AWP. So if they get close enough, he might not have enough uh, speed here to pick up more kills. He's already done a great job, even at close range. But this is asking a lot. He sees one of them. Hasn't unscoped yet, so they don't even know that he's there. Oh, no. Oh, missed the shot. Pistols out instead. He spins around and hunts down Brolin. What an amazing map this has been for Farlig so far. Now Rez... 40 seconds in a one versus three. And he's going to spin around and get that kill on Sip. Glaive is coming in. He's already low on health for Red. It's the headshot.